Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ulrike and I am a key beauty and skincare content creator and just, you know, general skincare enthusiast. Now today's video is actually not about skincare, it is in fact about hair care. A topic that I wanted to uh, do a video on for quite a while now, Korean hair care to be precise. And I've been testing out some of the most popular hair care products from Korea that are also popular in Korea uh, in the past weeks. And today I just wanted to share my rapid fire reviews of these products and tell you whether or not I thought they actually are worth the hype. So since this video will probably get quite long because there's a lot of products to get through, I'll try to keep it short. I always get criticized for being too long. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have a lot to say. Um, I don't want to go too deeply into the overall hair care philosophy, maybe in Korea, maybe I have to do an extra video on that at some point. Uh, technically, it's actually not that complicated or difficult to explain. I would say the main difference between Western hair care um, approaches and Korean ones is the main difference is really just that in Korean hair care and for Korean hair care products, the scalp and the health of the scalp is the main focus, especially for things like hair loss, uh, dandruff, of course, though that's probably the same here in the West as well, um, and general hair growth and health of the hair. Uh, usually the remedy for that is to make sure that the skin on your scalp is well taken care of. And pretty much just as in Korean skincare, for Korean scalp care, the basic idea is that you want to be very gentle, that you want to make sure that your scalp is properly cleansed, that the pH value is respected, and that once in a while you want a bit of a deeper cleansing, uh, a scalp scaling pack, some form of scalp peeling, um, both mechanical and with BHAs or AHAs. Although in general, the chemical peeling, if there's any sort of BHAs or AHAs in the scalp products, it's usually kind of a low dosage. But there is this idea that you need a deep cleanse of the scalp once in a while. And especially you also need to treat the skin on your scalp pretty much like the skin on your entire body and put hydrating products on it put specific moisturizing and nourishing ingredient on your scalp so scalp care really i would say is uh, the focal point of any korean hair care routine and also most of the korean hair care products always emphasize the scalp and having ingredients that will help and benefit the microbiome on uh, of the scalp in particular. Otherwise, I would say Korean hair products aren't that different from Western hair products. I don't want to exoticize or fetishize Korean products. I feel this is often done with Korean skincare and it's often painted as, oh, it's so different, it's so exotic. It's the same stuff. You've got your hydrating stuff. You've got your moisturizing, deep nourishing, oil containing products. You've got a lot of uh, heat protectant products because uh, Korean women do like to style their hair into cute curls mostly. You see that a lot on, <laughs> on K-dramas. Um, but I guess we in the West do the same. Let's be real. And, um, I would really say that the main difference is scalp uh, health and I think there's a huge emphasis on protein and replenishing protein in the hair which is also a bit of a warning I want to give to those of you like myself who tend to have hair that is easily overburdened by too many protein treatments. I have yet to find a trending Korean hair care product that is not also focused on having a thousand types of proteins and amino acids in it. So protein overload, if that is one of your concerns with your hair, I would be very careful which of the products mentioned here you want to try. Also, another important thing to know is that most of the products that I'm going to introduce here and that I have tried do contain silicones. 
So I would say at least for the trending products, um, if you are following a silicone-free hair care routine, you will probably not enjoy <laughs> most of these products. I myself am not anti-silicones. They have never really been a problem for my hair. I have pretty thick hair and I have pretty coarse hair. So silicones, for me, silicones have always been quite uh, helpful, really. And I do like that light coating feeling that they give. I use a cleansing and clarifying shampoo once a week, and that has been enough to prevent buildup. So uh, yeah, again, if you're anti-silicones, maybe don't watch the video in case it triggers you, makes you angry, <laughs> because all of these, pretty much all of the products uh, do contain some form of silicone or other. So let's start with the shampoos that I've tried. There are two different ones that I've tried that are both very, very popular and also have won awards and are really well liked in those Korean skincare apps, etc., etc., or beauty apps, I guess. And the first one is from a brand called Labo H. And I have talked about Labo H before in my trends video because one of the beauty trends that I see emerging or have been seeing for a while now, pretty much since the pandemic started, uh, is uh, Korean hair care products and even full on the entire brand, hair care brand, being focused on treatments for hair loss. And Labo H is really pretty much one of the main brands, one of the top brands for hair loss focused hair care. And I got these two from Labo H, which came in the set that was really, really affordable. I mean, this is a huge bottle. This is like 400 ml, 333 milliliters. And this was like $18 or even less, I think. I think it was only 60. It was super, super affordable, I found, for this amount of product. And this is a special edition, a special fragranced edition with pear and freesia perfume. Now, I'll be honest, the freesia scent wasn't necessarily <laughs> my favorite. I was kind of hoping when I ordered it that it would smell more like pear. I wanted something a little bit fruity. I don't smell any, any pear in this. This just smells like freesia, which is maybe not my favorite. I'm not a, a fan of flowery scents. Overall, I think next time I would just buy the regular shampoo, which I think just has a natural uh, essential oil fragrance. This one is just a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit too flowery for me. Now, having said that, the shampoo itself, I really, really, really like this. I'm super happy with this. I actually used it this morning, which is why the bottle still looks, I thought I clean, clean, cleaned it but it still looks a little bit grubby, sorry for that. But um, I use this pretty much every time I wash my hair, which is kind of every three days-ish, on and off, depending on how clean my hair still looks. <laughs> um, and it really is just so gentle. As I've said, Labo H is specifically focused on scalp care and hair loss prevention. I've struggled with hair loss since I had COVID in November. And I have to say, even though this is anecdotal, but I feel ever since I started using this and I started using it around December, I've had noticeably less hair shedding, definitely losing less hair. Now, I don't know if it specifically stimulates hair growth, because uh, I still have a few like places and places here where I haven't seen as much hair growth as I would like, but I am I am losing less hair ever since I've started switching to Korean products. And I feel especially this shampoo has made a difference also in my scalp health. It is very gentle and I find the foam is very, very soft. It only uses very gentle surfactants, and I can really notice that. My scalp has just not been inflamed at all. It's just felt very, um, uh, very well hydrated and not as itchy. So I'm, I'm really happy with this shampoo and would absolutely recommend it for anyone who struggles with an easily inflamed or flaky scalp. And if you, like me, have been losing a lot of hair, especially due to COVID, I really do feel 
again, it's anecdotal. I don't want to like raise your hopes too much, but for me, this has been a really fantastic shampoo. It cleanses well. Again, the scent, not for me. I would probably go for the regular shampoo, um, but otherwise, this is a real winner and I like it a lot. As for the other product that I got sort of as a freebie in this set, I just wanted the shampoo, but you know, I, I wouldn't I didn't say no to this one, which is the Hair Loss Relief Scalp Capsule Treatment from Labo H. And it came like in a special smaller packaging. I think the regular size is bigger, but this is 100 ml. Um, so, I must say I didn't really like this one. I This is a scalp treatment and you're supposed to specifically put it on your scalp, but you also use it as an all over mask. So it is supposed to be moisturizing, nourishing, but especially it's supposed to be clarifying for your scalp, plus also moisturize your scalp. It uh, contains a couple of like cooling, refreshing ingredients like menthol and peppermint oil. Most of the Korean scalp treatments will contain specific pseudo cooling sort of ingredients. I always feel that menthol doesn't really cool. It just kind of gives a weird sensation. I'm not a fan of menthol. I also don't necessarily like peppermint. I do find it a bit of an aggravating essential oil, but you know, it's not super terrible on my scalp. But just again, a warning if you are sensitive to these types of ingredients, just be aware they're usually in all of those products pretty much. Um, so it has a bit of a cooling sensation and it's supposed to just be a little bit of a deep cleanse plus a deep, nour deeply nourishing treatment for both the scalp and the hair. It also has these little beads in it, which dissolve once you apply it. So also a bit of a mechanical peeling. Um, I just really don't think it's that great as a scalp treatment or as a moisturizing mask. <laughs> to me, um, my hair always feels a little bit off when I use this. I don't think it did much for my scalp. In fact, when I've used this, and you can see I've used it quite a few times now, because it's one of those products where I feel this should be great so i will continue to use it and hope that at some point maybe i will like it <laughs> so far it hasn't happened yet i think i've used it like four times now every time i've used this afterwards my hair has felt a little bit off it's not as shiny it feels a little bit rougher i almost want to say because i just feel that it doesn't nourish as well as other hair care packs i've tried lately so for me this one i wouldn't repurchase and I can't really necessarily recommend it. I think there are better scalp health treatments out there, I would say. Next up, another clarifying scalp focused shampoo. And it is uh, this one, which is the Epunyol Scalp Mineral Salt Scaler. I saw this one um, browsing Odile Monod's uh, translations and explanations of the different awards for last year. This one won uh, the Globe Pick Awards, I believe. And I think it also was uh, quite highly rated at the Huahe app. Uh, it is a clean beauty brand. And this in particular is kind of like a, a mix of a scalp peeling uh, plus also a clarifying and detoxifying shampoo. So it's supposed to remove product buildup and it also contains little grains of sea salt. So it's supposed to be a physical scalp scrub. This is also quite heavily fragranced, I find, with essential oils um, to the point that I found it a little bit too much. <laughs> it just, you know, when it's so much essential oil that it kind of stings your nose while you use it. It's okay, I find, because you wash it off, but just again, it's a, just a fair warning. <laughs> this is this is quite fragranced with that quote unquote natural fragrance that comes from essential oils. It has again that, that cooling type of essential oil in it um, that also tends to feel a little bit strange sometimes on the scalp. Mm. This one I'm also not 100% convinced by. It's another one 
where I try to like it and I keep using it. But overall, I just don't fully love it, to be honest. You're supposed to use this twice a week instead of your shampoo. Uh, I just use it once a week because otherwise this would be my main shampoo. <laughs> and I do find this quite stripping, certainly compared to the Labo H uh, shampoo, which I find very moisturizing and very softening. This always leaves my skin feeling a little bit rough. Um, the clarifying action, however, I do actually like. I think it's a good clarifying shampoo. I just don't think it's that amazing as a scalp scaler or scalp peeling. I don't feel that it necessarily does as much as I would have liked for my often kind of flaky scalp. Now that my scalp has kind of stopped being super flaky lately, but I attribute this more to the Labo H shampoo than this one. Uh, I just think it's a little bit mediocre. In terms of what it does, given that it's quite expensive, this is a hundred, how much is this? 150 grams and it costs $25. For that, I just expected a little bit more, I think. It's kind of a mediocre to okay clarifying shampoo um, with sea salt in it. <laughs> I've tried other uh, scalp peelings. Um, I don't remember the, what was the brand that I really like? Grow Gorgeous, it was called. I think they don't make that anymore, unfortunately. But that one, I could really feel a peeling action on the scalp if I massaged it in. With this one, I just don't feel as much of an effect. So yeah, I would say it's not terrible, but I think there was a bit of an overpromise marketing wise that I don't think it can keep especially at that price point. So eh, um, to me, that one was eh. Now this next hair care product was an absolute winner for me. One of my favorite discoveries in terms of Korean hair care, a cult product for a good reason, I think. And it is this one and a huge bottle because this was a like, um, this was a special, <laughs> another special value pack at all of Young. Look, it's bigger than my head. Well, about as big as my head. So this is the very famous, very hyper popular Mormo Water Miracle Water Treatment Miracle 10. This is a special edition. Usually it comes in a smaller bottle and it had little hearts on it. I don't remember why. Because it was not Valentine's Day. I don't remember. It was some kind of, I think, Olive Young Award special. It came with a little refill as well. So this will last forever because this is 480 mil plus the refill. So, and it was like $25, best, best deal. I'm telling you, all of Young Value Packs is where it's at. So the Mormo Water Treatment Miracle 10. This is one of those Lamella waters. Uh, you probably have heard of this technology if you know the uh, L'Oreal, I think in America it's called Dream Water or Wonder Water, I don't remember. It has a bit of a different name here in Germany. And those are those liquid hair treatments that you um, put on your hair and only leave on for a very short amount of time. Hence the miracle part and the 10 or uh, sometimes it's called Seven Water, Wonder Water. This has got different names depending on the brand. Redken has one as well. Here in Germany, a brand called Schwarzkopf also has a whole line of Lamena waters. And um, they really are so convenient because of the fact that they only need literal seconds versus having to soak in for 10, 15, 20 minutes like a regular hair care pack and they still do manage to moisturize and nourish your hair almost the exact same way as a really deep uh, creamy treatment so they really have a watery a watery texture you apply them to cleansed hair while you're still in the shower doing your thing and uh, some people just must keep massaging them in for a couple of seconds. Now, uh, brands usually in their marketing materials say that the liquid tends to turn into some form of 
creamy texture uh, once you apply it to the hair. I've never really experienced that with lamella water. I find that it just gets a little bit more gel-like but I don't really think it has any miraculous transformation when it comes to the texture. I don't know, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I don't feel that once it hits the wet hair, it changes that much. It just gets a little bit thicker, a little bit more viscous, which makes it easier to apply because sometimes when you have to put it in your hands and then kind of navigate throwing it on your, <laughs> on your hair and massaging it in when it's the liquid, it can be a little bit awkward, which I find is the only slightly annoying thing about lamella waters. Plus, um, you need quite a lot, I find. I have long hair now, so I need a lot anyway, and quite thick hair as well. Um, but I find that sometimes a little bit just annoying to pour a lot into my hands and then, you know, having to get it on the hair. I find that the only slightly annoying thing about lamella waters, but otherwise I really like them. I have tried the L'Oreal one and I really like it, but I have to say, I think the Mormo one is better. I do like this one a lot more. I feel that it is even more softening and I really do see a difference when I use this. I remember using this the first time when I got it last year and I really just kind of gasped <laughs> when I applied it and then rinsed it out because my hair just instantly felt like silk. It gets so silky soft with this that I'm just so in love. I have been using this with every single hair wash. I kind of, I don't like conditioners that much. For my thicker hair, what I usually actually do is I use the lamella water and then a, a simple sort of hair care pack um, so I don't condition, uh, but I do always use kind of two steps, two nourishing, moisturizing steps, because my hair always just needs a little bit more. And this just really has been the best lamella water I've tried so far. I've tried the Schwarzkopf one, the German one, and I've tried the L'Oreal one. This one to me, better than either of them in terms of especially softening and detangling as well, because I get quite sort of lumpy hair. And Afterwards, it just kind of combs through like a dream. It is so, so good. The second Mormo product that I've tried recently and really, really, really like, super like, Mormo, I want to try more from this brand. Uh, this is the Mormo Recovery Balm B, which is this one. And a spacey, funky... <laughs> Packaging, another really big por uh, portion, not portion, size. How do you say that? At the moment, I can't, can only think of the word portion. I have hay fever brain, so excuse, excuse me being even more confused than usual. <laughs> so this one comes in a 120 milliliter packaging size. So it lasts probably forever because uh, you only need a tiny, teeny bit. Another thing about Korean hair care I want to emphasize is that, especially with those leave-in treatments, you usually only need a tiny, and I mean tiny amount. So this is a leave-in balm, and it is specifically designed to uh, give you heat protection. Uh, so I really like to use this. At the moment, I straighten my hair a lot with... Uh, straightening iron because I'm just not in the mood to try anything with my curls, especially when my hair is long. I kind of just get sort of waves that don't really form into curls anyway. I just have kind of given up on teasing out the curls. It's just an old truth, more work for me <laughs> than just straightening them. So I've kind of gone back to straightening the hair predominantly. And for that, I do need a good heat protectant. This one, I've really been liking so much. I've tried another heat protecting product from Korea that I'm going to show you next that didn't impress me as much. I super prefer this one. The texture of this balm is really like a, a very silky cream. I don't find it too silicone-y. So I feel it really sinks into hair very nicely, very often with these types of balms. I find that they feel as if they just kind of sit on the hair in a way that makes it look a little bit 
just not very nice. It often feels as if you haven't washed them, <laughs> especially if you use too much. With this one, I never feel that. Once it hits the hair, it almost turns a little bit more liquid and it's very smooth. You kind of just glide through the hair really nicely when you apply it and it really gets soaked in. It doesn't just sit on the surface of the hair. It offers heat protection. I can definitely tell when I use this together with a hair straightener that my hair is a little bit less damaged and a little bit less frizzy, although my hair is always a little bit frizzy, which you probably can tell when I when you watch the videos because <laughs> they always kind of do this. Not much I can do about this, but I do feel this really offers very good solid heat protection. It contains all sorts of amino acids. It's a strong protein treatment, so I do have to be a bit careful to not overburden my hair with too much protein. But um, especially compared to the product that I'm going to talk about next, this does not feel too heavy and it doesn't feel as if I'm getting too much protein. I just feel that my hair really does well with the Mormo formulas and really absorbs them so, so well, which my hair doesn't always do with these types of protein leave-in treatments. So this one, super recommended, especially if you use heat uh, styling tools. And if you have thicker hair, I feel it is better for thicker hair. And if you need moisturizing from your leave-in products, it doesn't have any styling effect, so it doesn't help sort of keep curls compact or anything like that. It's mostly moisturizing and protecting and very, very smoothing, I find. And it's it's beautiful. This one, super recommended. Really, really love this one. Okay, and as or I already teased, now a product that I also didn't like as much, and this one is probably controversial because everyone loves this one. This brand is so popular in Korea and also outside of Korea. Um, a lot of influencers that I also really respect also recommended this product as a heat protectant. So I'm thinking it must be something about me and my hair that makes me not do very well with this product. So take what I'm saying about this product with a grain of salt. And it is the, oh, wrong way. <laughs> the, uh, I never know how to pronounce this brand. I'm guessing you know. U-N-O-V-E, you know, I don't know, sounds weird. So I'm guessing I'm mispronouncing it. This is a sub brand of a very famous brand called Dr. Four Hair, which uh, is sort of the rivalry brand to Labo H. Uh, Dr. Four Hair also focused on hair loss treatments. You know, is more focused on, um, I would say general protection, styling, and it's a little bit younger overall and a little bit hipper and uh, also the pink, I guess a little bit more feminine maybe. I think Labo H is more almost focused on men. Hyun Bin is the Labo H uh, spokesperson or ambassador. So <laughs> uh, that gorgeous man. Uh, but this one seems to be more focused on, I want to say female hair, although I don't even know if there's much of a difference in styling between those two. Anyway, I'm not going to open that can of worms. Uh, so this is the You Know Heating Guard No Wash Treatment. And it is pretty much the number one heat protecting leave-in treatment in Korea, I would say. It's definitely more popular than the Mormo one. And it is always like number one on the bestseller list at Olive Young. Most You Know products are super best sellers in Korea. <sighs> Here's the thing with this. <laughs> and again, I want to say maybe I am the odd one out potentially. So again, take it with a grain of salt. I have pretty thick hair, uh, especially for a white person. <laughs> I have pretty thick hair and I have a lot of hair. And usually my hair, because it's often very coarse and damaged, can take quite a lot of nourishing but this just is so heavy to me i've really tried using only a little bit but even when i use the tiniest amount of this my hair is instantly just overburdened with whatever's in there it always looks greasy after I use this, even when I only use a tiny bit. So I just don't think 
it is that great. <laughs> I just think it is a little bit much. And given that I have more thicker hair, I don't even know how it would work for anyone with thin hair, which is even more easily overloaded with heavy textures. Again, I do want to stress that most other people love this. So I really don't know what it is with me and this product. But to me, it just feels very, I almost want to say greasy. It has a slightly more compact sort of balm texture compared to the uh, Mormo, which is a little bit smoother and a little bit lighter. And I just really find it hard to get a specific dosage, right? <laughs> that doesn't overburden my hair. When I use this every time, I just feel my hair looks greasy on the very day that I use it. And I've really tried to use the tiniest amount. Um, I do think it offers good heat protection. I do think it's a little bit better in terms of um, keeping my hair um, safe from damage versus the Mormo one. So I would say that's probably why so many people like it. But I just cannot, I just do not like the texture. It's too heavy for me. Um, I don't know what it is, but this did not work for me. I will try and find someone maybe who will use it up for me because I just don't like to reach for it. For me, the Mormo is superior as a heat protecting balm, but most of Korea sees it otherwise because this one again is the super bestseller. So I, I don't know what it is, but it didn't work. I, I can't lie, it just didn't work. And let's just stick to the controversial opinion, shall we? <laughs> to get that one out of the way. Because <laughs> here's another product that is so popular, so hyped. So everyone is in love with this. I've never seen a bad review about this. I was super excited to try it. But I have to say, um, I don't hate it. But it's... Yeah, I'm still debating whether or not I like it, but I'm certainly not super into it. And it is the very, very famous mise-en-scene or mise-en-scene uh, serum original or the perfect serum. I think it has a couple of different names, but you know, it's the big mise-en-scene one that everyone always recommends and this is the new renewed version it used to have a different packaging and i think they also upgraded the formula i've never tried the old formula so maybe that one was different i'm not sure but this one i am just i'm a little bit into minds about it so this is basically an oil serum a silicone containing oil serum that you again uh, use as a leave-in treatment, sort of like a hair essence, um, if you know that category of products. Um, it contains a number of really great nourishing oils, jojoba oil, avocado, camellia seed oil, like it has a whole list of really fantastic ingredients. And it is certainly, I would say the number one hair essence uh, in Korea and has been for years and years and years pretty much unrivaled. It is also very, very affordable. So it is pretty much sort of drugstore price. I actually got this in a massive value pack with two of these 80 milliliter, I think it's 80 milliliter, yeah, 80 milliliter uh, <laughs> sizes plus a little mini size. So I have enough mise-en-scene hair serum now for the rest of my life pretty much. <laughs> because the thing with this product is just like the you know of heating guard. That you have to be so careful how much of this you use. Um, again, my hair is thick, and so it can usually take quite a lot of product. But with this one, the first time I used it, I kind of just pumped maybe like a coin-sized amount, which is also what it says to use on, on the Olive Young website. But that was way too much. My hair looked so greasy and it got kind of, it got kind of lackluster. So now I always use the tiniest, and I mean the tiniest amount when I use it. I'm so careful with this. I think it is just also like the Unof heating guard. It is just a little bit too heavy for me. Um, that's the main reason why I don't, fully like it. I feel when I use a tiny bit, 
it can be quite nice on my hair. I've used it today actually and I feel it smoothed down my flyaways quite nicely and it just kind of gave a bit of a smoothness to my hair and a bit of a smooth coating. So there are instances where I kind of think, oh, it isn't that, it's not actually, it's, it's quite all right. But I just feel it is a little bit silicone-y and not as oil-like as I would have liked. It, I'm gonna just say it. I feel it feels a little bit cheap. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, mm, the, the building blocks for it to be amazing are there, but I feel formula-wise, it disappointed me a little bit. I, I also feel it's just not, as satisfyingly nourishing and moisturizing as I would have liked. There is another Korean hair oil that I've tried that I'm gonna talk about next that I so prefer to this one. Um, but the other product is a little bit pricier, so I still would say as a drugstore style hair essence, this is adequate, it's fine. I just maybe wanted a little bit more from it, given that it really is one of the most hyped Korean hair care products uh, globally and also domestically that I know. And let's close out the video with <laughs> two products from a brand that I really enjoy. Um, it is also very, very popular, though maybe not as popular as Mise en and uh, you know, so I don't know, my taste seems to be counter to, <laughs> to what's trending, but it still is very, very popular. This is probably one of the most successful products from this brand, and it is the Healing Bird No Wash Ultra Protein Treatment, Ample Treatment, I don't know. It always has kind of two names, all of these hair products, so I don't actually know which. I think it's the Healing Bird Ultra Protein No Wash ample treatment i think is the correct name anyway it's this one comes in this big spray bottle and i have used quite a lot by now because i have been using this pretty religiously every time i wash my hair because i love it and in between as well and this is as you can tell a spray uh, treatment leave-in treatment to be applied right after washing i really like spray conditioners more than uh, using a conditioner in the shower. I just, I don't know, I've always been a fan of these types of hydrating or nourishing sprays, but I also feel that a lot of them are just kind of duds. A lot of them don't really do anything. I've tried so many different spray in leave-in conditioners that just, where you don't really see a difference. Maybe it detangles a little bit, but that's all. Now this one, this one, you can tell a difference when you use it. I love this so, so much. I would say next to the Mormo products, this one is probably my favorite out of all of the Korean hair care products that I've tried. It's so good. It deserves all the hype it can get. Um, first of all, it's really good at detangling in a way that it just kind of smooths the hair and really helps with any sort of knots and just kind of very gently uh, softening them out almost, which I with my now at the moment longer hair really appreciate. And also it just makes hair so soft overall. It really helps with frizziness. It also, out of all of the products that I've tried, this is the one that gives me the most noticeable shine. When I used this, I remember using it for the first time and I sort of sprayed it on and I went, oh, wow, oh, this is where my shiny hair is coming back because I've been having trouble ever since I returned from New Zealand. I think the water in Germany just isn't quite as good as in New Zealand. My hair has not been shiny the way it used to be. It might also be an age thing because I'm also getting grays and the structure of the hair changes once it turns gray. With this, for the first time, hallelujah, my hair is actually showing a bit of a shimmer, a bit of a shine. And just for that alone, I am like, I'm in love with this. I love it so, so much. This is uh, also a protein treatment. As I said, most of these products have some form of protein in it. This has a, like a, another whole host of 
different proteins in it. Plus it contains argan oil, which is really good for hair care, really softening, really nourishing. Um, but it is very, very light. You can feel that it has a bit of an oil content because it coats the hair a little bit, but not to the point that I feel overwhelmed. The spray mist is also very, very fine. So I find it's very easy to get the dosage right and to not overburden your hair. Um, and the protein content doesn't feel as intense and as heavy as, for instance, with the you know of treatment, which just, I think, is too much for my hair. I think if you have thinner hair, if you have hair that is easily overwhelmed, I would try this one over some of the balm textures that I've shown you because you can really just get a light sort of coating without too much of a heavy feeling. And again, for shine, this one is fantastic. A 10 out of 10, this one, I am so in love with it. It's so, so good. Healing Bird, a brand that I want to try more from, for sure. Which brings me to the last product, which is kind of more like a bonus <laughs> bonus review, because I actually only have a little, little mini of it, because it was part of a value pack where you get this as an extra freebie, together with the Healing Bird spray because this is also a healing bird product and this is the one where i said talking about the mise en scene or mise en scene i never know how to say that technically it should be mise en scene because of the accent on it so mise en scene <laughs> the hair essence i feel this product is the better alternative personally and it is the healing bird nourishing argan hair oil or, or ultra ultra protein hair oil rich again it has two names i don't know korean naming of products is sometimes very confusing to me <laughs> always very long-winded names anyway this hair oil is fantastic i love it so so much at first i wasn't sure if i would like it because yet again i made the mistake of using a little bit too much I know I keep saying this, but it is really important to understand about these products. They're just really highly concentrated. And I would suggest that you start with a very small amount. This definitely is very concentrated. However, unlike the mise en scene, I don't feel it overburdens my hair. As long as I use a tiny amount, it just distributes better. I feel in my hair and it doesn't feel as silicone-y and as sort of coating as the mise-en-scene one. This one sinks into my hair and get, gets absorbed by my hair a lot better, not just than the mise-en-scene hair essence or hair oil, but any hair oil I've tried. I've always had trouble finding a good hair oil that wouldn't just feel greasy on the hair. This to me, again, as long as I use a little bit and not too much, does not feel greasy. It also contains silicone, so it's not a pure hair oil, but I feel the content of the silicone versus the oil content is better balanced. It just feels a little bit more luxurious. Uh, it also smells really nice. <laughs> it has that smell. Mm, I don't know if you know, remember the body oil, uh, the body shop argan oil skincare range. That's the smell in this one. It's sort of that fake argan smell, but I really like it. It smells kind of nutty and a little bit fruity almost. Oh, and I think it's so nice. <laughs> But I really think the main reason why I love this so much is because it is just so smoothing, nourishing, um, really helps keep frizz down and just gives a bit of luxuriousness to my hair overall. And I really do prefer to the mise-en-scene and it is a little bit pricier, but I really think in this case that it's worth it. I will absolutely repurchase this. I will buy the full size as soon as this is done. I mean, I'm kind of halfway through only. Uh, this was, I think, like 50 mil, if that. I think it's even less, but it lasts forever because you only need a tiny amount. It's beautiful healing bird, really 
that is a brand I would say you have to try because it's it really deserves all the hype it's getting. So those were some of the most hyped up, most popular Korean hair care products that I've been trying these past weeks. Certainly not all of the hair care that is trending. There's so much more to discover. Um, if this uh, is of interest to you, I'd be happy to keep playing guinea pig and try out more products. Let me know if a part two is wanted or needed. <laughs> and uh, as I've said throughout the video, some of my opinions might be a little bit uh, out of left field because I don't know, some of the products just didn't really impress me that much. But then on the other hand, some of the products were so fantastic. I would say the Mormo uh, water treatment really deserves all the hype. The Healing Bird Ample, fantastic. Their Argan Oil, a surprise hit to me that I didn't even expect. I really loved it. The Labo H Shampoo also is so, so good. I'm so happy with it. Uh, in general, it's important to remember that Korean hair care is very highly concentrated, so just start out slowly with it. And um, yeah, I think if you have damaged hair, if you use a lot of heat uh, to style your hair, these could be really fantastic products for all types of hair. And depending on how much nourishment you need, just look for those leaf and balms. And yeah, I hope to discover more. If you found this video helpful, if you enjoyed it, it would be great if you could give it a thumbs up. I would also super, super love and appreciate it if you could consider subscribing. We are at 600 subscribers yet at the moment, which is incredible. So thank you so much for everyone who subscribes and keeps supporting the channel. It's still such a small channel, so everyone is very, very appreciated. And I most definitely see you again next week with a new video. Until then, leave a comment, leave a like. I'm always happy to engage with you as well in the comments. And I see you again next week. And until then, take care. Bye.